Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. I'm certainly having a wonderful day. Glad you could spend a little time with me today. And today we're going to talk about something that is very prevalent in a lot of your lives. We're going to talk about how alcohol affects your brain and your body. And I know you we've all drank. We've all gotten, well, most of us have gotten drunk. And you know what happens, but as usual with this show, we're going to tell you why. And when you understand why, hopefully I can convince you that there may be better ways to live your your life socially or even we'll even talk about depression today and how alcohol can lead to depression and, and the chemical reactions that occur. Because, yeah, I'm a chiropractor. It's the first time you're ju- tuning in. I, I, I'm board certified in chiropractic. I'm board certified in orthopedics, pain management, double board certified in nutrition, BS in nutrition, retired dietitian, award-winning author. This show is heard coast to coast and around the world, so I think it's the number one health and ra- health and wellness radio broadcast in the world right now. And so I try to give you information that you can walk away with and say, I can use this right now. I know Ahmad and I, my my producer, were talking before the show, and he said that he's been doing this for, I don't know, how many years you've been doing this now, Ahmad? Uh, I don't remember. Since birth, right? Yeah, 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 Since birth. Since Ahmad was born, yeah. (laughs) So he's been producing this show. And every show, what, what did you tell me? Learn something new. Learn something new every day. Every day. And so that's what we try to do is I always think about what can I teach Ahmad today? And in the process, you'll, you'll learn a few things, too. So let's talk about first about how alcohol changes your brain. Now, a lot of studies suggest that alcohol in moderation is good for you. How many are going to go with that argument right now? Raise your hands. A lot of you, right? Of course, alcohol is good for you. I've, well, red wine is good for your heart. And I've heard that a little bit of alcohol can help prevent certain diseases. But fewer people know this. No study has ever proved a causal relationship between moderate drinking and lower risk of death, only that the two oftentimes go together. Now, what the heck does that mean? In other words, it's just likely that moderate drinking is just something healthy people tend to do, not something that makes people healthier. So when you look at it from that angle, well, healthy people don't drink a lot. If they don't drink a lot or they drink moderately, well, they'll probably have a longer life expectancy than people that drink a, a lot. Well, they're probably not healthy people anyway. Bottom line is this. There's not a single study done to, on moderate alcohol consumption and mortality uh, that is a gold standard kind of study. Now, there's different ways you can do studies. When we talk about a gold standard kind of study, it's a randomized controlled clinical trial that we would be required to have in order to approve a new pharmacological agent. We have to have double-blind studies. We have to have some people do it. Some people do placebo alcohol. And that's probably not going to happen in the alcohol world. Now, alcohol has been tied to things like breast cancer. It can lead to accidents. And number one uh, cause of a teen death, what do you think it is? Car accidents. A lot of those accidents have to do with drinking. Of course, in that case, it would be underage drinking. Uh, it's linked to liver disease, cancer, heart damage, strokes. Wow. May not be the best thing for you. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Dr. Joe, I like having a drink when I'm out with my friends. I like having a glass of wine when I come home from work. It relaxes me. A friend of mine, that was her argument. I like a glass of wine when I come home from work. I feel good about it. So over time, she changed her tune. She said, I'm going to try it. And she did. She gave it up. And what a difference, she said. I'm, she's losing weight. She has more energy. She feels better. And ironically, the alcohol, even though temporarily makes you feel more relaxed, long-term is a chemical stress. And that stress then causes you to need more alcohol. So that argument really doesn't hold water either. Six minutes after consuming alcohol, equivalent of about three beers, already changes are happening in your brain cells. The brains begin to run on sugar, the sugar and the alcohol, rather than in glucose, which is your normal brain fuel. And so the brain actually changes the way it metabolizes nutrients. There's a concentration of substances such as creatine, which protects the brain cells. Also, decreases the content, uh, it decreases as the concentration of alcohol increases. Choline, that's a component of the cell membranes. Every cell has a little wall around it called a cell membrane. And choline is vital to make that cell wall allow nutrients in and allow waste products out. Choline is reduced. That probably means that alcohol triggers changes in the composition of the cell membranes. So where, once again, I say it, I've said this many times. Remember the old commercial? It's not nice to fool Mother Nature. And that's what you're doing. You're putting chemicals in the brain, causing an alteration in the chemistry of the brain, which causes an alteration in the function of the brain. Something you have to realize when it comes to health. Structure affects function. And function can affect structure. 
Now, what the heck does that mean? As a chiropractor, our job is to make sure all the bones in your body are lined up. If the bones are lined up properly, you don't have any pressure or don't have pinched nerves or pressure on the nerves. And so the brain is able to get messages from the brain down the body out to the organs and back up again. So now structurally, if everything's lined up, it functions better. If all the pistons in your car are firing properly, structure affects function. So here we're looking at function affecting structure. The chemicals that you're putting in your body are altering how the brain functions. So what's the good side of alcohol? I'm going to try to get to that. Now, I'm sure, again, you've heard that alcohol can be beneficial if consumed in low qualities, like one to three glasses of alcohol a day. But there are thousands of studies on alcohol consumption and its effects on your health. And researchers still can't prove that moderate drinking leads to a longer, healthier life. It just ain't there. It's one of those arguments that just doesn't hold water. What we have found, however, plenty of evidence showing the structural damage in your brain, uh, as well as detrimental effects, even when consumed in small quality, quantities. So the alcohol is, it, it, it by definition, alters how the body works. Now, I think this is far more telling than anything else. It's hard to imagine any significant health benefit that could outweigh the destructive influence on your brain. So even if there were some health benefits, and we're going to talk about, we've got to go to break soon, but when I come back from the break, we're going to talk about uh, the, the people say, well, what's that one alcohol that's good for you? Because it's red wine, right? Well, red wine's good for you. Red wine's good for your heart. Red wine has resveratrol in it. And resveratrol is a nutrient that can actually help reverse the aging process. All of what I just said is true. But I'm going to tell you why you need to dig a little deeper to make sure you understand how it works. Because even though the, the statement is true, the overall effect is very dangerous to your body. Folks, got to go to a break. I'm going to open up the phone lines. If you have any health care questions, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website is drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. We have our podcast there, hundreds of hours of radio, video. Um, we're going to talk about supplements coming up soon. If you want to order my supplements, my books, all on the website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. But the lines are open. If you have any health care question, 844-44-DR-JOE. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, thanks for being here. I am Dr. Joe, and we're talking today about alcohol and how alcohol affects the brain and the nervous system. Now, as a chiropractor, my job is to protect your brain and nervous system. I mean, think about this. The body protects the brain and nervous system with the hardest uh, material it can, it can make, which is bone. So the skull and the spinal column protect the brain and the spinal cord. Covered in bone. Nothing else is covered, surrounded totally by bone. You have ribs protecting your internal organs, but it's not totally surrounded by it. So we're trying to prevent, we as humans, uh, we try to prevent trauma from occurring to the brain and the spinal cord. But you now are kind of overriding that and chemically damaging the brain and the spinal cord. And the brain controls what? Everything. So people come to our offices every day and they'll say, well, I have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain. I've been in a car accident. I've never seen a car accident where the car was damaged where the occupants weren't. Ever. Never seen it happen. 33 years of practice. So if you're ever in a car accident, there was damage to your brain and spinal cord. So we try to protect it. And as chiropractors, we try to realign everything the best we can to take the pressure off the nerves to help with pain, but also allow normal function. And that's why with every one of our patients that comes in, we do a nutritional workup. We make that part of the treatment plan. Now, we can do nutritional workup separate from that if you want to. That's fine. But we make it part of our chiropractic treatment plan because we know that if you're putting the right chemistry in your body, your body's going to heal a whole lot faster. You know, we said earlier that creatine and uh, choline concentrations in your brain decrease as the concentration of alcohol increases. Uh, creatine is involved in energy metabolism, which gives you fuel for your brain, and choline is part of the cell membrane. So what happened is we, th there were some studies done following up on people that did short-term alcohol consumption. And the good news was that any damage that occurred was 100% reversible over the short term. Another study recent, uh, recently published in Human uh, Psychopharmacology, that's a fun magazine, I bet, addresses the chronic effects of low to moderate alcohol consumption and the structural and functional properties of the brain. They did an MRI, and magnetic res resonance imaging, and they found a linear negative effect of alcohol consumption on brain volume, which means the more alcohol you drank, your brain shrank. 
as a result of low to moderate alcohol consumption. And that support for the, for the contention that alcohol overall is detrimental to your brain and your thought process, your cognitive functions. So your brain actually shrinks. And that's one of the reasons why you get a hangover. Your brain dehydrates. I mean, think about alcohol, right? Do you ever notice how you drink one beer, you pee out three? Where do those other two beers come from? Your body is giving up its own vital nutrients to flush it out of the system. It wants to keep the alcohol away from the brain, and your brain produces something called vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone, and your brain is producing that right now. Yours, mine, Ahmad's, everybody's producing it right now. But what happens is when you drink alcohol, your body shuts down its own production of vasopressin or decreases it so that you pee more. So why are you peeing so much? To flush the alcohol out of the system. In the process, you're flushing out vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. So now you're wasting a lot of important nutrients when you drink alcohol. So here's a little trick. I'm going to kind of get to the end game here. I, I, I'm going to give you some ideas what to do if you do drink. I may get to that later, but I'll give you a little, little heads up here. If you do drink, for every drink that you have, I want you to have three glasses of water. You have to rehydrate the body because as the brain shrinks, it can cause neurological damage and also can hurt the brain, give you a hangover the next day. Also, I'm going to recommend that you eat good food. And this is the irony of this is when you're drunk, what do you want to do? You want to eat bad food, right? You want to go out at 2 o'clock in the morning to the first burger joint that's open and scoff down as many as you can and try not to puke. I know. I was young once. I drank once. One time. I drank more than once. And that's what we do. We try to go to little square hamburger places up in uh, New Jersey and try to eat as many as we could. And it's going to soak up the alcohol. Well, it doesn't work that way. You don't soak up alcohol once it's absorbed into your brain. And so you're eating worse food because your body's being depleted of nutrients. So if you're going to drink, at least do something smart and have a decent meal. Like maybe a big salad, maybe some fruit, some nuts, some seeds. Certainly Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Now, I'm not saying you should take them in lieu of not drinking, instead of drinking, and along with drinking. No. You should take them to give your body the nutrients that it needs to function normally. And the minimum amount of nutrients that you should take is Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source every day. I have it sitting here in front of me in the studio. And it's prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, a complete multivitamin, a dehydrated fruits and vegetables, made at a very low temperature so the enzymes are kept active because the enzymes are being depleted as well when you drink. And then the super greens are going to alkalize your system and give you minerals that you're wasting as well. So every day you should be doing Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. That's like no matter what happens, you should be doing that every day. I do it sometimes two, two or three times a day. But when you're drinking alcohol, you're wasting a lot of the nutrients. And you're usually eating bad food because you're not making good judgment calls, which we're going to talk about in a little bit too. But if you want Super Greens Essential Source, B Vitamins, we're going to talk about in a second. We have a, a supplement called Dr. Joe's uh, B Complex. Uh, those are all on my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. Or you can go um, to Amazon. We have an Amazon page as well, and, and you can get it there. Uh, and we'll get it shipped over to you. Or just come to my offices. Uh, if, you're, if you live in the area, I know the show goes around the world, but we have offices in, in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Um, you can come pick it up too, which will save you some shipping costs. Another study published in Alcohol and Alcoholism, yes, actually a journal, adds uh, to the most recent lineup of studies linking regular alcohol consumption to various forms of brain damage. So the study concluded that e even heavy social drinkers who have no significant neurological or liver problems show signs of regional brain damage and cognitive dysfunction. So when you're one of those people that says, alcohol doesn't bother me, haha, <laughs> I'm tough, you're wrong. Studies are showing that long-term abuse uh, of alcohol can do it. Changes are more severe, and other brain regions are damaged in patients that have additional, uh, who are de depleted in vitamin B1, or have a vitamin B1 deficiency. A, another reason why you should make sure you're getting your B vitamins. And it's interesting. Uh, follow me on Facebook, by the way. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Sign up for my newsletter. If you go to my website, drjoesposito.com, right on the home page, says sign up for the newsletter. It's absolutely free. Give us your email address. We'll never give your email address out. We don't steal your information like other uh, places. And we're going to send you, a, a, as a gift, a lecture that I did called, So What Can I Eat? And it talks about what you can eat. But it was interesting. I just went on Facebook because a lot of you uh, follow me while I'm on the air. And I just saw the, a thing popped up. Study shows that alcohol, not marijuana, is the major gateway drug. Serendipitously, it just happened to pop up right then. 
So getting the right nutrients in your body is the key, and this is what's going to happen. When you start getting the right nutrients into your body, you're going to require less artificial stimulants like drugs and alcohol. And one of the things I work on with my patients that are addicts, whether it's uh, uh, pain pills um, or alcohol or whatever it is, we get them healthy. We get their nervous system working. If you have pinched nerves, we need to unpinch it. We get them on good nutrients, super greens, essential source, B vitamins, and then the body starts to work normally again, and a lot of those addictions start to go away. That goes for food addiction too, by the way, and sugar. Folks, got to go to break. If you have a healthcare question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, if you want to order supplements, books, listen to a podcast, send me questions, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, sign up for my newsletter, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Glad you could spend a little time with me today. We're talking today about alcohol. Now, listen, I want you to listen to this show. Because it's important because a lot of people say, well, I'm going to drink a little bit. You know, some, some alcohol is good for you. I've heard every argument known to humanity, and that's okay. You can have your arguments. I just want to give you all the information that there is, and then you can make a decision. I always tell people that, you know, it, it's interesting. I don't, I don't eat meat. I've been a vegan for over 30 years now, and people always get a little nervous around me. Oh, oh, oh don't, don't, don't look at what I'm eating, Dr. Joan. Oh, where do you get your protein from? And where do you get your calcium from? And people get a little freaked out over it. And I don't care what you eat as long as you don't care what I eat. But I do want to give you information so that you can make better informed decisions. And whatever you decide to do, I'm going to support that decision. I tell my patients that all day, every day. Whatever you decide to do is up to you. I believe everyone should take supplements. And as part of a treatment plan in our office, we do, uh, we do a nutritional workup. And I'll tell my patients, listen, I-, I think you should take these supplements. And whether you do them or not, it's totally up to you. I can't make you take them, but I will tell you what will probably happen when you do. And about 99% of the patients that I talk to say, you know, Dr. Joe, I've, I've, I've listened to you, and, and you're right. I do need to improve my diet. I do need to make sure I get chiropractic care to make sure my spine is lined up properly, take the pressure off the nerves, help my pain levels. And you're probably right. I do need to take supplements. And when they do, inevitably, they go, oh, that was really great. That was amazing. Every now and then we'll have a patient who's so sick that the supplements um, – we got to go slow with them. We kind of got to slowly get their body back to normal again because some of them are just so sick. But most people do extremely well. And that's why I start people off with Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. That's the, the minimum. That's what you should be doing regardless of what else you do in life. Uh, I eat a really good diet. I, I eat probably 60 to 70% raw. I'm a vegan. And I still take Super Greens and Essential Source at least once a day. And it's one of the reasons I look about 15 years younger than people say I am, than I am. They say I look younger. And the energy level. I want to have your energy, Dr. Joe. It's not that I have a lot of energy. Here's the key. I'm going to tell you my secret. I just don't deplete my energy. When you deplete your energy, that's when you get tired and groggy and brain fog and cognitive function shuts down and and, uh, you you just can't focus like you're supposed to. When you don't deplete the energy, uh, the energy's there. And alcohol is one of the things that really just zaps you. Uh, So my position overall is that you shouldn't be drinking. But if you do couple of things I want you to consider. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. So you're going to, I'm going to tease you. In the radio business, we call that a tease. So what happens? It, alcohol is a neurotoxin. It affects the brain. And as a chiropractor, I always want to protect your brain and your spinal cord. So even moderate amounts of alcohol, not recommended, because it can make you more vulnerable uh, to various preventable cancers. And that's the sad part. I have cancer patients come in my office all the time. Dr. Joe, I want to take a holistic approach. And I say, listen, I'm not treating your cancer. I'll teach you how to get healthy. And then hopefully that'll solve the problem. And many times with most diseases, they they get great results. It harms your body's hormone balance. You don't use a lot of hormones in your life. There's a lot of things in your life you don't use a lot of. You might use a thimbleful of vitamin B12 in your entire lifetime. That's not a lot, is it? But why do we take supplements every day? Because we don't absorb it very well. And we don't utilize it very well. So the little bit that gets through is not a lot, but you need to take it to get it in there. It can cause liver damage. Now, it goes without saying, alcohol should be entirely avoided, of course, if you're pregnant. I don't think I have to tell you that. Um, If you plan on getting pregnant, don't do it because you might end up getting pregnant and drinking before you realize you're pregnant. Alcohol consumption can blunt the responsiveness of what's called the hypothalamus to the immune system and other non-immune signals. So the hypothalamus is a part of your brain that controls a lot of other things. It controls temperature, it controls hunger, and it controls part of your immune system. So when alcohol gets into the brain... 
it can mess with your body's ability to react uh, and the immune system works. So let's talk about red wine. We've got to do that. If you have a question, folks, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-J-O-E. That number, by the way, rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. In case you need to reach me, make an appointment, you have questions, you can do that. Red wine. Everybody says red wine is good, right? It's good for your what? Say it with me. Your heart. There you go. It's a source of resveratrol, which is a really potent antioxidant that's been shown to increase the lifespan of what's called your, your genes. It has a, a telomere on it. The telomere is a little tail that's on your genes, not your blue genes. And the lo- when you're young, they're very long and active, and that's a sign of youth. And as you get older, the telomeres start to shrink. That's aging. So we can actually do a study. We can do a DNA study on you, and, or a cellular study, I should say, and look at the telomeres. And if they're long and active, you, your biological age might be better than your chronological age. Or it could be worse. You could be 40 but your telomeres are telling me that you're 60 or vice versa. You could be 40. Your telomeres are telling me that you're 30. So the resveratrol has actually been shown to help reverse some of the damage to the telomeres. And so essentially reversing the aging process and increasing your lifespan. So red wine and uh, you can you has this, these, these anti, this resveratrol in it. It's a good source. However, here's a couple of rules. If you really want to use it as a medicine, a medicinal benefit from red wine, a couple of things you have to consider. Number one is that the wine has to be organic. And the reason is this. The reason grapes produce resveratrol is they're preventing, uh, they're fighting off fungal attacks. So fungus attacks the grape and the grape produces resveratrol to fight off the fungus. If the grapes are not organic, chances are they've been sprayed with pesticides and antifungal agents. Well, the antifungal agents mean there's no fungus, which means the grape doesn't have to produce the resveratrol so if you're not eating organic grapes, chances are you have much less resveratrol and in many cases zero resveratrol because the grape didn't have to produce it because it wasn't being exposed to fungus. So another reason why if you're going to do red wine, it needs to be organic. And plus you're not getting all the pesticides. Number two, you have to drink several bottles of red wine per day, organic to have any significant effect of the resveratrol working on your, your telomeres and, and, your, and, and on your genes. So you have to remain drunk essentially all day with organic wine if you're going to have any benefits. Now, if you want to take resveratrol as a supplement, good, good for you. You can take that in, in pill form. Okay, we have it in Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Uh, you can also get it not only from grapes, you can get it from Japanese knotweed. I know, no one's heard of Japanese knotweed, but another good source of resveratrol. But here's the thing. You don't necessarily have to take supplements. In fact, Rachel, my screener, uh, we were talking about this today, about uh, pomegranate juice and how it's wonderful. It's loaded with antioxidants and pomegranates are so good for you and absolutely true. However, if you ever read how much sugar is in that thing, my feeling is the sugar would at least negate most, if not all, of the benefits you might get from the antioxidants from taking pomegranate juice. Now, if you eat the whole pomegranate, if you ever had one, they're really good. It has fiber in it, and fiber is, is going to act synergistically, work together with the other nutrients to make it more effective. So it's more effective eating the whole thing, the whole pomegranate or the whole orange or the whole apple, than eating the juice itself. Because all that sugar without fiber is going to spike your blood sugar and blow up your insulin levels, and it's not really a good thing. So red wine, although it may have some benefits for you, isn't really the best for you. And there's a lot of other foods you can eat to get a lot of antioxidants, which... I will talk about when we come back. If you have a healthcare question, give me a call, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-J-O-E. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Go to my website. Sign up for my newsletter. We send out lots of good information, tell you when we're doing free lectures. Uh, order my supplements, Super Greens, Essential Source, the B vitamins, the adrenals, the nitric oxide. All those are on my website and also on Amazon if you have an Amazon account. 844-44-DR-JOE. If you have a question, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Don't go. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you spent a little time with me today. Obviously, we're getting a lot of feedback here. Uh, Lots of folks follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram. I can see you guys do that when I'm on the air. Uh, And I appreciate that because uh, we're coming out with a regular podcast probably this week, actually. So when you start following me, I'll give you all that information. Uh, You can subscribe. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, by the way, too. You can subscribe to our podcast, and we'll send you out lots more information. Because if you like this, imagine more of it. Because this is information on healthcare that really, really works. 
I want you to take control of your own health. And that's why we do these shows, to give you the information that you need. And when you need help outside of what you can do, that's why my doctors and I are here to, to help you. So we talked about red wine and resveratrol, and resveratrol was an antioxidant. We talked about that before the break. Um, that helps actually uh, stem the, the tide of aging and actually can reverse a little bit of the aging. But guess what? Raspberries, mulberries, even peanuts have resveratrol in them. Japanese knotweed has no, it's not, nuts that you'd probably eat, but that there's a supplement there. Other great sources of antioxidants. Blueberries, green tea, Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source. All these things are loaded with antioxidants, so don't give me that I'm going to use wine uh, as a health food. It just doesn't float because there's so many other things you can do. Uh, you can eat some steamed broccoli if you wanted to and get antioxidants. Going to a more plant-based diet. These are all things you can do without all the damaging side effects of the alcohol. Because remember, alcohol has to be broken down and, and detoxified, and it's done in the liver. And that's why it causes so much liver damage and can cause things like fatty liver. And fatty liver means now your liver enzymes can go high, your liver end isn't working properly. And just about everything, well, pretty much everything you eat, drink, breathe, has to go through your liver. And if you've got a clogged up fatty liver, if your liver is toxic, it just can't do its job, even with cholesterol. There's a lot of research now showing that your body, many people with high cholesterol are producing the right amount of cholesterol. They're just not recycling the old stuff. And so the recycled stuff sits around, the stuff that should be recycled sits around in your blood and builds up in your blood, then you have high cholesterol levels. So we can give you medications to lower your cholesterol, and sometimes that's necessary. I'm not saying it's not necessary. But if you change your diet, if you clean up your lifestyle, many times that solves the problem. The liver cleans itself out. The liver is the fastest healing organ in the body. And now you start recycling the old stuff. So I'm not telling you come off your medication. I'm telling you let's get you healthy so hopefully you won't need the medication. Did you follow that? So don't come off your medication quite yet. Let's get you healthy first and then see if we can get you off, your, off, off, off the medication. So if you consume large amounts of wine, it also increases what's called your insulin levels. Insulin is a hormone that goes into the cells and opens up the cells and allows the cells uh, to take sugar in. And if you take too much sugar in the body, you release a lot of insulin and the cells become insulin resistant. They can't open up and allow any more in. And so what happens is the cells are now insulin resistant and you call that, you know the disease, name it with me, type 2 diabetes. There you go. And we start seeing things like Alzheimer's, we're now calling that type 3 diabetes because the brain becomes insulin resistant. And that's all from eating too much sugar. And alcohol is a super high concentration of sugar. And I can't tell you how many people over the years, when they just cut back or cut out their alcohol, started to lose weight like crazy. And they're like, wow, that was the secret right there. Because it's, it's, it's like drinking pure sugar. So drinking alcohol, uh, if you're doing it to reduce your risk of heart disease and dementia, it's not your best option. What would be better options? I'm going to drink alcohol, uh, wine, to help my heart disease. There's a bunch of other options that you can do, like lifestyle habits. You can eat better. Pay attention to avoiding things like sugar. Eat a lot of vegetables. Taking supplements, Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, loaded with antioxidants. Make sure your nervous system is working properly. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, these are all signs that you're pinching nerves and nerves control organs. So if you have pain, pain is nothing more than a warning sign. It's telling you that something's wrong. Ignoring the pain or covering it up, which sometimes is necessary, is not a good choice for your overall health. Make sure you're able to digest your food. Anybody have acid reflux? Raise your hands. Heartburn, gas, bloating. These are all signs that your stomach may be pushed up against your diaphragm. And if the stomach is pushed up against the diaphragm, you're not able to digest food properly. And if you can't digest food properly, you can't absorb nutrients. So even if you have an awesome diet, it may mean that you're not able to absorb the nutrients to make the body work properly. And in many, many, many cases, we just need to adjust or manipulate or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. When we pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm, it relaxes, just like any other muscle. Sometimes it needs a massage, and it starts to work more efficiently. Now, the acid coming up into the throat, if you've listened to my shows before, I talk about this on almost every show, the acid can lead to things like esophageal cancer, chronic cough, runny nose. 
So that stomach up against the diaphragm thing, I need to talk about it every show because the number one reason we see patients in our offices is pain, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain. We're really good at that. But the number two reason we see patients is because of acid reflux and heartburn. And the number three reason we see patients is nutritional. But we make nutrition part of all our patients no matter what. Get a lot of omega-3 fatty acids for brain function. I take uh, algae oil. Algae oil is a little more expensive, but it's the purest form of omega-3. The next best choice would be krill oil, K-R-I-L-L. Krill oil, a lot less likely to be uh, loaded with mercury and heavy metals and other toxins. My least favorite form of omega-3 fatty acids is fish oil. But if you're going to do fish oil, make sure it's certified mercury-free. If you call the company, if it doesn't say it on the label, call the company. If they can't tell you, yes, we're certified mercury-free, there's no other answer. The answer is yes or no. Well, maybe sometimes it depends on the fit. No. Is it certified mercury-free? If it's not, I would switch to krill or algae oil. It's a little more expensive, like I said, but it's the purest form. And this is the cool part about being healthy, is when you're healthy, you have so much more money. You're spending less money on doctor bills. You're spending less money on downtime from work. You're able to work harder. You probably get a raise. Your social life improves. Uh, your love life improves. Your school life improves. Everything changes when you have a normally functioning nervous system, a normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. And it's not hard. It's easy. So I would avoid most fish because of the mercury. I'm not a big fan of fish. Keep the body in motion. Avoid things like aluminum. that You find that in antiperspirants. Had one of my patients come in, vegan, works out, beautiful girl, and we did a hair analysis on her. We can do that, by the way, folks. We can test your adrenal function. We can test the hair analysis for mineral function. We can do food allergy testing, all that at my offices. But she was high in aluminum, and she couldn't figure out where she'd get aluminum from. It was from her antiperspirant. So, folks, if you have a healthcare question, 844-44-DR-JOE, my website, if you want to order super greens, essential source, B vitamins, adrenal complex, all that's on the website and on Amazon, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Sign up for my newsletter on the website. We want to be your doctors. Hey, folks, don't go anywhere. Don't. We're going to be right back. Go anywhere. Don't. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. I am so glad you're spending a little time with me today. Good topic today because it's something that affects a lot of us, uh, and it's on alcohol. And we're talking about what alcohol does to the body. And we're talking about, uh, we'll get to it today, too. I, I, I keep teasing you with this. What you need to do if you do drink. What you need to do to protect yourself um, from causing the damage to the brain and nervous system. Because, again, as a chiropractor, uh, my big concern is I want to protect your brain, your spinal cord, your nervous system, and make sure the brain is getting messages from the brain to the body and then back up to the brain again. That's really important to me. And so I want to teach you that you can fix a lot of the chemical things that mess with the nervous system. And then if you have some fi- something physical, you know, car- bone out of place, car accidents, sports injuries, pinched nerves, that's when you may need some outside help, like hopefully coming to see my doctors, so that we can get those bones put back in place. But chemically, you have control over that. You have control of what goes in your body. And if you are going to drink, and I'm a realist, I understand that you're probably going to do it. But you need to know what you need to do to prevent the damage from happening. And also avoiding the hangover, if nothing else. If that's your motivation, I'm okay with that too. But one of the things, if you have trouble kicking the habit, anybody have that issue? Raise your hands. Yeah, about 1 in 12 of you do, actually, according to statistics. What can we do? How do we kick this, 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 get this monkey off our back and kick this habit? Do you know anybody trying to kick the alcohol habit? Well, here's what seems to work. You might already be aware that omega-3 fatty acids, you've heard me talk about those a few minutes ago, are good for your heart health and are good for inflammation. But now researchers at the Indiana University School of Medicine have uncovered a surprising new link among omega-3 fatty acids, your mood, and alcohol intake. Uh, DHA is one of the alcohol, uh, what is the alcohol? One of the good omega-3s. There's DHA and EPA. They, they, They stand for something. Um, is essential for us to stay healthy throughout all stages of our life from before you were born because the brain and the cognitive function, cognitive cognitive function is your thought process as opposed to an autonomic function like your heart beating or your lungs breathing or uh, you see a bear and you run away. Uh, Those might be more autonomic or automatic reactions. Cognitive is your thought process. So you need to have that for proper development of the brain and the cognitive function right through your golden years so you don't have cognitive decline and heart problems. But in an ironic twist of nature, and I've, I've been upset over this, and when I die and go to heaven, I've got to have a long talk with God. I'm not happy with the knee joint. I'm not happy with the shoulder joint. 
I'm not happy with the positioning of the reproductive organs of the males across all species. And I'm not happy uh, with the fact that we as humans don't produce this essential omega-3 fatty acid. So it's really a cruel twist. We have to get it from an outside source. Most of you don't get it from an outside source. Now, I put it in Dr. Joe's essential source. I'm sorry, Dr. Joe's Super Greens. We put chlorella and spirulina, which is algae, which is an excellent source of omega-3 fatty acids. But I even take an additional amount because it, I know how important it is. So anyway, back to where we were. We're talking about alcoholism and how our body doesn't produce it. But scientists, they already suspect that there might be a link between some psychiatric disorders and omega-3 fatty acids. I've got a sneeze coming on if you're wondering why my voice changed there. Um, so at the research, the researchers wanted to find out how bipolar mice would react to taking omega-3 fatty acids. I'm going somewhere with this. Hang on. They gave DHA, the omega-3 fatty acids, with mice that had characteristic bipolar symptoms, including depression, stress-activated mania. <laughs> you know anybody like that? I know lots of people like that. Much to everyone's surprise, the DHA blew away their depression, and they were subjected, when they were subjected to stress, they no longer reacted by becoming manic. How many people you know that are manic? Now we're looking at could be a, an omega-3 deficiency. So the bipolar mice essentially became normal when they were given omega-3s. When researchers took the brains of the, the omega-3-treated mice, they were shocked to see that the omega-3 fatty acid was acting on the same genes that psychiatric drugs were designed to target. So it appeared that they found a totally natural, side-effect-free alternative to psychiatric drugs. But it wasn't the only exciting things that these researchers found. It, in a completely unexpected turn, they stumbled onto a novel finding that had huge implications for people that have trouble quitting alcohol. It turns out that bipolar mice, like many uh, bipolar humans, have a taste for alcohol and will drink it to excess. But when the DHA-treated mice uh, were given alcohol, they suddenly stopped abusing it. So ain't that cool? So one of the things we can do if we have problems with alcohol is increase your DHA and EPA levels, your omega-3 fatty acid levels. And again, we have DHA and EPA in Dr. Joe's essential source, uh, Super Greens. I keep getting those. Yeah, Super Greens has it. The essential source has some some as well, but we put specifically chlorella and spirulina in the Super Greens. And if you don't know what they are, they're two powders. Uh, I take them every day. I mix them with coconut milk or almond milk. You can mix them in a smoothie. Um, I had a patient say, can I sprinkle them on my food? I said, absolutely. You know, I don't care how you get there. Just get here. Song from Olita Adams, Before You Were Born. And I don't care how you get here. Just get here. So get it in your body. And it's amazing. And what's cool is if a child is eating solid foods, you can even make a little smoothie for them. Take a little frozen banana, some coconut milk, ramen milk, and maybe not a full scoop like I'd give an adult, maybe a teaspoon. And give it to the child and start getting these nutrients into their body early because their brains are growing, their organs are growing, their, their nervous system is growing. And as a chiropractor, I'm pretty big on making sure the nervous system is working. And you have to make sure there's no pressure on the nervous system physically. And you have to make sure you have the right chemistry for the nervous system to work. And that's why it's so important that you take supplements. You have a good diet. You make sure the nervous system's working. Make sure if you have acid reflux or heartburn, we work on that to pull the stomach away from the diaphragm. Because these are all the things that you have control over. Sometimes we're dealt a genetic bad card here and there. And we may not have all the genetics that are going to make us these superhuman people, but we can control a lot of it. And that's what's so cool. And if you're going to make babies, your DNA is going to be passed on to them. So I want to make sure you're healthy. If you listen to last week's show, we talked about one of the, the big concerns we're having with male sperm count dropping dramatically and men producing abnormal sperm. And there's a lot of things that they're doing. But that's on my website if you want to listen to it. It's on our podcast, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. Uh, you can order Super Greens. You can order Essential Source, the B vitamins, the adrenal supplements, the digestive enzymes, the, K, the, 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 the D3 with K2. Most of us are deficient in D3. Nitric oxide. Open up your circulation to all parts of your body. All that's on the website, drjoesposito.com, or on Amazon. If you have an Amazon account, you can order there too. But folks, at least do something. Take the first step. Start taking supplements. If you want to make an appointment to come see us, again, we're in the Atlanta area. We have three offices. Uh, you can call 844-44-DR-JOE, which rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. And if you have a healthcare question right now, 
Lines are open. 844-44-DR-JOE. Hey, folks, don't go anywhere. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We'll be right back. Dr. Joe Esposito. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. I am so glad that you're spending a little time with me. Got a couple of folks on hold, so keep holding on there. Uh, you know, I'm going to take the calls first. When, I, when I'm done, though, I'm going to go over a few things, a protocol that you need to follow if you do drink to keep your body safe and healthy so you don't cause a lot of damage from it. Let's go right to the calls first. John, how can we make your day better? Hey, how you doing? Very well. A um, little off uh, subject, but uh, my daughter is 14. She's going through some acne. Oh, yeah. So I'm wondering if there's any kind of supplements or anything. I she's she's doing pretty good with the diet, no dairy and everything. So just wondering if there's – I know I heard something about selenium might be good. Selenium might work. You can also take something called N-acetylcysteine. It's called NAC. And N-acetylcysteine uh, creates something called glutathione, when glutathione helps detoxify your liver. Now, you could take glutathione as well, but I'd rather take the N-acetylcysteine because I know it's going to convert into glutathione. So N-A-C or N-acetyl, the letter N, acetylcysteine. So three, three, three words there. Uh, that might work. Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, I hear rave reviews when kids start taking that stuff in acne. Uh, I've seen a lot oh, okay. of kids taking it, and they just never got the acne. They might get one pimple here and there. Again, they're going through puberty, of course. Um, that would work. But also, I want her to start cutting out her sugars. That's breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, <laughs> pastas. I'm really glad she gave up the dairy. That's a super move right there. Um, right. And if you can cut out the animal products the best you can, I know that's tough. Uh, the saturated fat uh, can cause problems with the liver as well. But the sugar is going to be the big one that she needs cut out. Try the N-acetylcysteine. Try the super greens and the essential source and see how we do. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. Great, John. I appreciate that. His daughter will be sending me flowers pretty soon. Uh, Tracy, how can we make your day better? You there, Tracy? Yes, sir. How are you doing? I'm well. What's going on with you today? Yes, I was calling. I, I heard you referring to acid reflux and digestive problems, and you were saying something about uh, it, it's to do with the stomach being too close to the diaphragm? Absolutely, yes. Uh huh. So what can be done to correct that? Well, you can read an article I have on my website. It's, it's the, I think it's the number one article we have on the website, actually. If you go to the website, drjoesposito.com, go under a blog, you'll see Dr. Joe's articles. I think it's like the sixth or seventh one down. It's on GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, G-E-R-D. And we talk about the technique we use where we actually massage the stomach down away from the diaphragm. And that works tremendously for actually restructure, re repositioning the, spine, the stomach. So if you read that article, that should help. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks so much. I Thanks. appreciate it. Yeah, the number one reason we see patients is chiropractic care, of course. We're chiropractors. Uh, the number two reason we see patients is for digestive problems. And a lot of, most people, is a crossover. Because if you have digestive problems, uh, you know, every now and then somebody will come in our offices and they'll have perfect alignment in their whole body. It's not often. Because most of us have banged ourselves around. We've been in car accidents and sports injuries and lifting and bending and squatting. And the biggest complaint I get, by far... Why didn't I get this fixed sooner? And when people start taking supplements like Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Essential Source, Dr. Joe's Adrenal Supplement, if there's circulation issue, Dr. Joe's Nitric Oxide Supplement, and people say it all the time, why didn't I start taking these things sooner? And my answer is, I don't know that. So if you're having health problems, folks, just fix it. Stop suffering needlessly. And that's the thing I see so often is people suffer needlessly and then they get mad when they finally get things fixed. So that's why we're here. And if you need to call the office when I'm not on the air, 844-44-DR-JOE. Tony, how can we make your day better? Yes, Dr. Joe, I've been hearing a lot about the diatomaceo, that it's good for parasites in the body, candida, yes. uh -huh. uh, certain viruses, sure. and it's a good detox. I didn't know if you had any information on that, or is that something wise to use? Oh, uh, Tony, I have an information on everything. Have you listened to this show before? <laughs> yeah. Mm, well, I haven't heard you talk about okay, that. Okay, yeah. No, diatomaceous earth is fine. It's, uh, it's actually little sea creatures, actually, that have, you know, from long, long time ago, um, the shells of the sea creatures. And so it works pretty well. Um, it is detoxifying. It also works well to keep roaches out of your house. You can sprinkle diatomaceous earth around, and they, they won't cross the barrier there. Uh, but I don't see any downside to taking it. Absolutely not. So it's certainly worth a shot. Do you carry it? I don't carry it, no. But any, any good health food store would carry it. Oh, all yeah. righty. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Great question, though, Tony. Thanks so much. No one's ever asked that question. Good question. Thanks so much. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye.
All right, so if I, I, folks, I am Dr. Joe Esposito. Uh, ooh, lots of you uh, follow me on my good. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. I love watching those lines light up when I'm on the air um, because we send out a lot of good information there. Sign up for my newsletter as well. Uh, it's on the website because we send out a lot of good information. Um, I just saw an email from uh, Shaney B, my, my, my higher up, and he just sent it to the, the, the uh, IT pr- programs here at the office, IT, IT directors, and we're going to launch the, uh, um, uh, the podcasts either this week or next. So you definitely want to sign up for that as well. And if you sign up for the newsletter or follow me on Facebook and Instagram, you'll know when these things happen so you can get all this information. All right, if you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE, D-R-J-O-E, and uh, that number rings through the office. Now, let's talk about things you need to do. If you're going to have a few drinks, I want you to follow a protocol. Now, that being said, I'm not condoning you going out drinking. I'm being a realist. If you do do it, which you shouldn't, but if you do, and acetylcysteine, like we just talked about. It's an amino acid. It's an amino acid from cysteine, It's called, and that's uh, parts of a protein. And it helps increase your glutathione and helps reduce the acetaldehyde toxicity. That's a big fancy word for you. And that's the thing that causes a lot of the hangovers. So try taking N-acetylcysteine about 30 minutes before you start drinking. And it's good for your liver as well. So if you have liver issues, N-acetylcysteine is something you might want to consider. B vitamins. N-acetylcysteine works better when there's B vitamins around. Uh, Especially uh, thiamine, or vitamin B1. Vitamin B6 can also help lessen hangover symptoms. And since alcohol depletes B vitamins in your body, B vitamins are required to eliminate it from your body, and the B vitamin supplement should be taken beforehand. And we have one. It's called Dr. Joe's B Complex. It's on the website, drjoesposito.com. And unless you have a really good diet, the chances are you're B vitamin deficient. And when I do my analysis on my patients, I'd probably say about 80% of the patients I find have a B vitamin deficiency. So that's on the website as well. Uh, milk thistle. You may have heard that. Uh, that's a, a cool supplement. And it contains silmarian and silibin. And these are antioxidants that help protect your liver from toxins, including the effects of alcohol. Not only is silmarian found to increase glutathione, but it also helps to regulate liver cells. Milk thistle supplements uh, may be the most useful when taken regularly, especially if you know you're going to have cocktails. So taking it one time may not solve the problem. It may be something you want to take on a regular basis if you have liver problems. So N-acetylcysteine is also very good for the immune system. If somebody has a weakened immune system or autoimmune condition, you might want to consider taking some N-acetylcysteine as well. Now, I don't carry an N-acetylcysteine supplement. Uh, You can get that elsewhere. But the B vitamins we have, digestive enzymes, um, omega-3 fatty acids are, are in the uh, essential source in the super greens. Nitric oxide for circulation, that's a real good one. Uh, the adrenal support and the, pro- uh, the probiotics are good. So the adrenal support and the probiotics, aside from the super greens, the essential source, are our best sellers. And they're so popular all around the world because they work. Folks, got to go to break. If you have a healthcare question, 844-44-DR-JOE, my website, drjoesposito.com, which is Google Dr. Joe. Uh, You can order the supplements there. You can order my supplements and books on Amazon as well. Uh, Sign up for my newsletter. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram so when my uh, uh, podcast comes out, you know all about it Uh, because we want to be your doctors. We want to help you naturally get well and stay well. Hey, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Hey, don't go anywhere. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. I am so glad you're spending a little time with me. Very excited to have you here. An exciting show today, too. A A lot of comments I'm seeing on Facebook and Instagram. I do appreciate that. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, sign up for my newsletter. We send out a lot of good information. And we're talking today about how alcohol affects your body and your brain and things you need to do if you are going to drink. And again, I'm a realist. And we said earlier in the show, if you, for every one drink you have, you have to have three glasses of water. That's going to prevent dehydration. N-acetylcysteine, what's called NAC, is a supplement that can help produce something called glutathione, which can help the liver heal. B vitamins, absolutely positively necessary. Of course, I take Dr. Joe's B-complex um, every day. Most of us are deficient in B vitamins, so it's good to take that. Milk thistle, that's a supplement that can uh, help the body. It has something called silmarian, uh, and that helps the liver function normally. Vitamin C. Alcohol may deplete your body of vitamin C, which is really important for reducing the alcohol-induced oxidative stress on your liver. Oxidative stress is, is kind of like uh, rust, if you ever look at a piece of metal rust, that's an oxidative stress. It, it, free radicals kind of break things down and change the molecular structure, so vitamin C can prevent that. Interesting, one animal study showed vitamin C was even more protective to the, li- to the liver than milk thistle, 
after exposure to alcohol. Now, if you're going to take vitamin C supplements, be careful. There's two types. One of them is real vitamin C. The other one isn't. It's only one-eighth of the vitamin C molecule. And so when you're looking for something, you want to make sure it truly says vitamin C. Okay? Magnesium. Most of us are deficient in magnesium. Oh, vitamin, oh, somebody just sent me a message. Ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid is what you'll see as vitamin C as a supplement. If it says ascorbic acid, that's not the whole vitamin C molecule. So I appreciate you guys pointing that out. I, I forgot I didn't cover that. Magnesium, another nutrient depleted by alcohol. And a lot of us are already deficient in magnesium. In fact, most people are deficient in magnesium, omega-3 fatty acids, enzymes. Um, so that's why it's important to take minimum amount of supplements every day. Magnesium has an anti-inflammatory property, and it can help reduce some of the hangover symptoms. Because with the hangover, there's a lot of inflammation. So by taking things that are anti-inflammatory and not eating things that are inflammatory, you're in good shape. Most of us don't eat a lot of magnesium-rich foods, so taking a magnesium supplement might be helpful. Here's the catch on that. Magnesium, too much of it can cause loose stools. That's what we make milk of magnesia out of. So I don't want you drunk and not being able to control your muscles and having a magnesium excess in your body because that can be really messy. So don't take any more than the recommended dosage or eat more nuts and seeds. Nuts and seeds are very high, good sources of magnesium. So remember, when you drink, it causes an inflammatory reaction. Pain can cause an inflammatory reaction. Diseases, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, all are inflammatory, have inflammatory components. So if you have a disease and you drink, you're going to make the problem worse. It's going to cause inflammation back and forth, you know, making the disease worse, making the hangover worse, making the disease worse. So why don't you just get healthy? Don't be like most of my patients that say, why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I suffer so long? And my answer is always, I don't know. Just get it fixed. Let's go back to the callers. If you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE. John, how can we make your day better? Hey, thanks for having me on the show, Dr. Joe. You are. <clears throat> Just want to thank you for uh, you know, all the, uh, the great information you like a walking encyclopedia. Uh, thanks, John. I um, appreciate that. The, uh, the question I had just recently for probably the last two, three days, I've been having stomach uh, pains. That, that not pains where it feels like something is like uh, very hurtful or sharp in my stomach. It's, it's like when you eat too much, like when you're, you eat too much candy, the next morning you wake up with a stomach ache. Yes. So uh -huh. every time you ex or inhale, it feels queasy down there. Sure. Um, so yeah, for the last three days now, I will say this: I know I know this started happening when I was on this bean uh, binge uh, late nights. Unfortunately, I eat and then go to bed. Yeah. But I've been eating a lot of beans for the last three days before it happened. Um, so I'm like trying to figure out why. Because right now, <laughs> it's funny you mentioned magnesium and all that. Because I've been taking all these over counter stuff, and just recently, um, you know, it moved through my system <laughs> this morning. Understood. Right. Uh huh. And and uh, I don't want to get vid you know, powerful on this. <laughs> we all appreciate it, that. It, it was <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, and, you know, I just happened to notice that it was, you know, it was very dark colored, um, you know, when, when it did move. So I'm, I'm, like, figuring out, I don't know what's going on. Well, it could be uh, that the, the stomach could be pushing up against a diaphragm, and the nerve that control one of the nerves that controls your stomach is called the vagus nerve, V-A-G-U-S. And when the vagus nerve is irritated, it causes dizziness. Uh -huh. So if the stomach is spasmed, many, that's why when you get seasick, you throw up. Okay, It's all kind of tied together via the vagus nerve. Another thing you might see happening, John, is you might start getting uh, irregular heartbeat or high blood pressure in anyone when the stomach is involved because the vagus nerve can send neurological impulses over to the heart, causing the heart to beat faster and harder than it's supposed to. And yeah. I used to have this all my life. When I was a kid, I remember laying down at night, like I said, eating and going to bed, and boy, my heart would be racing, and my heart would skip beats, and I didn't know what it was until I finally, you know, went into graduate school and realized it. So if you still right. have it after three, you know, if everything moved along, hopefully that solved the problem. If you're still having it, uh, you can go read the article on my website on GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. It's under blog. You'll see Dr. Joe's articles and read that. And it talks about the technique we use to pull the stomach away from the diaphragm. But that queasiness <laughs> is probably related to the stomach and the vagus nerve. Gotcha. Okay. All righty. Thanks, John. Appreciate the call. Folks, if you have a question, like John, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. So we're talking today about alcohol and what it does to you, and I did want to cover the things you need to do if you are 
um, drinking, and I said you know, I gave you some supplements you might want to consider. Of course, Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, Dr. Joe's B Vitamins, and acetylcysteine to prevent liver damage. Uh, milk thistle, prevent liver damage. Good sources of vitamin C, not ascorbic acid. Water is going to be your key. But alcohol acts as a depressant on your central nervous system, which means when you drink, your brain cells communicate at a slower rate. And there's a part of your brain called the limbic system. That controls emotions such as anxiety and fear, and that's also affected. So that's a, a lower part of your brain. It's called the limbic system. It's not as advanced, and it's, it's, it's a primitive part of your brain. So, for example, uh, animals, any animal that has a nervous system, if, it, if it's being threatened, it feels fear, and it hangs anxiety, and it can run. So the limbic system now starts to be affected if it doesn't work as well. So as the function of the limbic system decreases, your inhibitions start to disappear, and you think that you're being charming and outgoing and funny and sociable and cute, when in reality, you're usually making a jerk of yourself. So the, function, uh, the functioning of what's called your prefrontal cortex, that's the brain region associated with reasoning and judgment, also slows down when you drink, leading to more impulsive behavior and sometimes poor judgment. Anyone ever do something stupid when they were drunk? I bet you did. Now you know why. Okay, the prefrontal cortex doesn't form until about around your mid-20s, and that's why young kids do stupid things. The prefrontal cortex tells you this is not a good idea. This creates fear. The, the, the reward, the consequences that, that go along with doing things are filtered by the prefrontal cortex. And many times young people, the prefrontal cortex isn't formed right. Well, alcohol, even if you have it formed, stops it from working properly. Folks, got to go to break. 844-44-DR-JOE. That number rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. So if you have questions, you want to make appointments, if you want to order Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, the B-Complex, the enzyme support, the nitric oxide, the adrenals, books, all that's on the website, drjoesposito.com. Just look at store. Um, and you can also go to Amazon if you have an Amazon account as well. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Sign up for my newsletter. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Letter. Don't go anywhere. We're going to Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. I am so glad you're spending a little time with me. How exciting, isn't it? Man, you and I get to spend time together. Love that. So we're talking today about alcohol, what it does to your body, what it does to your brain. Gave you a couple of hints on what you need to do if you do drink. Uh, if you missed that, you can listen to the podcast, drjoesposito.com. It's on the website. Uh, also, uh, like I said, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, sign up for my newsletter, which is no charge. We never give your information away to anybody, I promise. Um, and we're going to start doing uh, regular podcasts as well. So if you like the show, you can get lots more information on a podcast too. And that's all ready. No charge. It's my gift to you. Um, a lot of you want, may want to make appointments. You could always call 844-44-DR-JOE when I'm not on the air if you want to do that or if you want to order supplements on the, on the website or on uh, uh, Amazon as well. Uh, now, alcohol, talking about that, and somebody did talk about they felt a little queasy, but at lower doses, your body can still function under the influence of alcohol. Not me, though. Okay, I'm such a lightweight. In fact, one time I was driving, I was I gave a lecture up in uh, Tennessee, and I was driving back, and there was the um, uh, one of the distilleries, one of the famous uh, breweries up there. Distilleries, it is not a brewery, it's a distillery. And uh, ironically, you can't buy this, you can't the whiskey, you can't buy in the town where it's made. It's it's a dry county, which I always found interesting. But anyway, I took a tour because I was driving back. I said, "What the heck?" And I'm walking through the, the, the distillery, and they have an area where they have the corn mash, where they make the, the you know, they ferment that, and they lift up the top, and you could smell it. So they said, "Take a big whiff." So I took a big whiff. I got drunk. I was like staggering around. And that's how much a lightweight I am. But also, I don't drink. I can't remember. I think it was 28 years old last time I had a drink. So that was uh, three years ago. Yeah, three years ago it was when I was 28. All right, I lied. Ladies, first man ever lie to you? I bet you I'm not. Anyway, what we're talking about there is different people are affected differently when it comes to alcohol. And as you drink more, of course, your behavior, your, adjustment, your judgment, uh, it becomes inhi inhibited, uninhibited, I'm sorry. Uh, your cerebellum, which plays a role in muscular activity, is also impacted. Now, the cerebellum has a lot of vascularity, has a lot of blood vessels. And so when the alcohol gets into your blood system, it becomes an issue. And you can get a little uh, dopey. And that's one of the reasons why you fall down. Your cerebellum creates balance. Now, a lot of patients come to us as chiropractors, and they have balance issues. And a couple of things we do is, number one, of course, we talk about their diet. Number two, we check their cerebellum. 
And I don't want you doing this at home, but what you can do is, what we do is have them close their eyes and we wrap our arms around them. We don't touch them, we just wrap our arms around them. And we see if they fall to one side or the other. And if they start to fall to one side or the other, that side that they fall to is usually the part of the cerebellum that isn't working as well. And so we do uh, adjustments, specific adjustments, to stimulate that part of the cerebellum. And it's really kind of cool because we can then do it again. They close their eyes and their balance is back, so it's neat. Sometimes it's a digestive issue. Like one of our callers said, he feels queasy. Um, that could be the vagus nerve, the stomach with acid reflux or heartburn. Um, of course, if somebody drinks, if they're dehydrated, several different things can cause dizziness. It could be an inner ear issue. So we may have to go in there and try to adjust the nerves that go up to the inner ear. And a lot of patients with balance issues, we, we can uh, resolve the issue because we get to the cause of the problem, not just treat the symptoms. But if you come inebriated, of course, you lose your balance, you feel dizzy, you definitely shouldn't be driving because the cerebellum is being affected, which is affecting balance and control. Now, when you get high doses of alcohol, neurons in your brain that control your heart rate and breathing can slow down their communication to the point where the breathing stops and actually actually lead to death. So you can die from alcoholism, and people do, because the brain just stops working. Just like the opioids, that's how the opioids work. They, they shut down a lot of the autonomic function, breathing, heart rate, and the body just, the brain can't tell the heart to beat, and the heart stops beating. So once again, I'm not again, I, I, I mean, I, am, I don't drink, and I, I, I wish you didn't either. But I'm also a realist, and so if you're going to drink, make sure you do the right things. Now, the same alcoholic beverage, of course, is going to have different effects on different people. Your body height, your ratio of muscle to fat, your health status, your genetic makeup are all things that are going to play an important role. Uh, whether or not you're eating is going to affect it. Food in your stomach tends to reduce alcohol absorption. Now, you can't do it after you drink. You have to do it before you drink. Now, alcohol is absorbed in the stomach. It's one of the few things that's actually absorbed in the stomach. Most things are absorbed in the small intestine. Your mindset is going to play a role. Research shows that even fake drinking alcohol can make people tipsy. They can give them something, tell them it's alcohol, and it's not. And it can affect your mood. And it tends to make a bad mood worse. So, folks, if you're in a bad mood, probably not the thing you want to do is go out and drink. Alcohol is the most commonly used addictive substance in the United States. Probably right up there with coffee, I would guess. Estimated that 1 in 12 Americans suffer from alcohol abuse or dependence, while several million engage in risky binge drinking. And binge drinking means that you drank enough alcohol to get you above, above the blood alcohol level, 0.08. So if you drank enough to get your blood level above that, you've got your binge drinker. So there's your problem. In recent years, health experts have uh, focused extensively on overdose deaths from heroin and prescription painkillers, which, of course, have risen rapidly. Uh, we have one study here from 2014. More people died from alcohol-induced causes, 30,722, than from overdoses of painkillers pain and heroin combined. So I know there's a big move against this. I know uh, the George Chiropractic Association, I'm part of that movement. We're trying to get the, the word out there that if we can get to the cause of the pain, hopefully we can work with people that are on uh, painkillers and opioids and help them get off that. Then we get their diet straightened out. Uh, we got to get to the cause, of course, get the diet straightened out. So you get the nutrients up to the brain so the brain has the raw materials to produce the natural chemicals that shut down pain, like GABA, G-A-B-A. GABA is a neurotransmitter that suppresses other neurotransmitters. So if you have a digestive problem, acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, maybe you're taking antacids. Now, again, I'm not telling you not to take drugs or a heartburn medication. You're not absorbing, if you're taking heart, many heartburn medications, you're not properly absorbing B12 iron, calcium, magnesium. Magnesium relaxes muscles, helps with pain. B vitamins are necessary for nerve function, helps with pain. Your stomach acid breaks proteins into something called amino acids. And amino acid glutamine becomes GABA. And GABA suppresses pain. So this is why when patients come in our offices... We check the nervous system. Of course, we're chiropractors. We check their digestive system because if they're not breaking the proteins into amino acids, they may not be producing enough neurotransmitters to suppress the pain. And then we get them on an anti-inflammatory protocol. Diet, supplements, things like Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source. If there's a circulatory issue, we might get them nitric oxide. We have a Dr. Joe's nitric oxide support that opens up the blood vessels. 
And so we try to get the body as healthy as we can with a normally functioning nervous system, a normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. Folks, if you just missed the show, if you're just tuning in, you missed a great show, it's going to be on my podcast, drjoesposito.com. If you want to order su- supplements, books, if you have questions, you can always send them to me through the website, drjoesposito.com, uh, or just Google Dr. Joe with number one Dr. Joe in the world. And if I don't say it enough, folks, thank you so much. Thanks for following me on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for telling your friends about the show because we want to get you well and keep you well. Catch you next time.